evening, good evening. Let me show you a plant here. See this bonnet? See how the leaves are curled in? Tips are yellowed. See how the leaves are curled in? Curled in. Curled in. How's that? Looks like a holly leaf or an oak leaf. This plant was pat was was potted in a mug identical to this, identical to this one. This plant had the exact same issue. Looked like that really bad at one time. I took this plant out, repotted it. The lower half of this is filled full of gravel. The limestone chips does make a difference. The top part is a regular potting soil mix that I use, the um, African violet soil mix that I make, that I mix up. This one I took out, it had that issue, as well as every other plant. I had about five or six plants like this show up, at first, show up start do that. And at first they grew real well, did really, really well, bloomed, were beautiful. Um, and I showed them in videos. Then they started doing this hook, this collapse of the leaves. Um, when I took the plant out of the pot, when I took it out of here, it came out in a plug. The top part here like pops out with the roots and everything. The bottom part, there's soil left in the bottom part of the pot. No air can get to it, it can't dry out. The um, roots don't go down that far, so there's no roots in it to pull moisture out of it. So it's, it remains wet, no airflow. It seals off the holes. This one has two or three holes in the bottom of the pot and a wick. I use wicks. I water in the trays, but the wicks pull the water up. And the reason I use wicks is so it saturates the whole pot. If I water in the tray without wicks and just allow the, the soil itself to wick up the water, I end up really, really wet on the bottom. It stays wet all the time. And it'll cause this issue with your plants. I don't show my mistakes enough. I don't ever show my mistakes. I might occasionally show, you know, because I had a, a highlight or a few things like that, but um, I don't normally show my mistakes. It's not It's not because I don't want to show my, because I don't make mistakes or don't want people to think I make mistakes. I don't know, people don't watch something to see something bad going on. They usually watch things to see pretty plants and stuff, so I show pretty plants. But I do have the issues. I do make mistakes. All the ones that I had that were in pots, I've taken out of pots since then, and they've all done real well. They've all rebounded, regrown. This little one's a perfect example. You can see the edges of it are still a little bit hooked on the old old leaves, the old foliage, still showing some of that pinch. And the new foliage looks really, really good. No problems. It's doing just fine. This was in a little coffee mug. I only have a couple of plants that have been that are still potted in that. This is one of them, but the bottom of this is full of gravel. And this one's doing really well. Not having any problems with it at all. This one grew out of it, is doing real well. I put it in here to test it to see if that was the issue, and I believe that's what the issue is. When the roots grow down, they get into the gravel part, and there's a lot of air, air left in that because there's no dirt in it. It stays open, and they have an air space that way. Sitting on top of a wet, damp plug of dirt suffocated it, and this is what happens. You have to sh plant these shallow if you plant them in a deep pot, I mean, I'm not saying you can't use a deep pot, you can't use a deep ceramic pot, glazed or unglazed. The only difference between glazed and unglazed is unglazed will wick water away faster than glazed. That's the only difference. The depth of the pot, there is going to be a problem, though, unless you take, make up for it by filling it full of something. Filling it full of dirt is going to cause an issue. And that deep is not going to have a problem with wicking either. If you use wicks in your pots, which I recommend using wicks in your pots, I'm dumping dirt on my floor. I use wicks in all my pots, and the reason is so that I evenly maintain moisture in the pot. All right? If I don't use a wick and just put water in the tray and just water in the tray from the bottom and let it suck water up naturally, you're going to keep wet, 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 especially if you have a deep, deep pot. The amount of water that it'll take to pull up all the way up, especially on a little plant in a big pot, the amount of water it'll take to saturate that all the way to the top is phenomenal. That's a lot of water. You don't want to do that. I water from the bottom, but I use wicks because the wicks will pull it all the way up. And my, my wicks stick out the top of my pots usually. You can usually find them, they're usually sticking right underneath the surface right there. But, um, and we can have a separate wicking show because there's a lot involved with wicking size of wicking, type of wicking, the soil mix it has a big benefit, or I mean, has benefits or, you know, negative and positive effects on wicking, etc., etc., etc. But I wanted to show this. I don't show my mistakes enough. This is a mistake. Now my plants are growing out of it. They all seem to be doing fine. This is an example, perfect example. You can use a deeper pot. You can use these, something like that, but you need to provide air for it.
Um, all the plants that I've put back into ceramic or put back into a heavy pot like that or a deep pot that I added gravel to are doing real well now. Um, the ones that weren't, I've had to take out. Now this one is growing back out of it, looks good. The new growth looks real nice. It's even trying to flower again. But um, just a mistake, something that happens. I want to show that. I don't show my mistakes enough. I need to. This will probably help somebody. But um, thanks for all the kind comments. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful evening.